Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing the book freak out tag, media book freak out tag, by the way, Eva, that's the correct term. And I have looked online for the questions and I found two versions with different questions, like the last couple of questions were different. So I kind of combined them, we're gonna go with what I found, okay? Uh, so without further ado, this is my second year doing this tag, I believe, or third, I don't know, don't quote me on this. But yeah, it's about looking back at the era, how has it gone, um, my favorite books I found thus far and my least favorite books I found thus far and so on. So without further ado, let's get into question number one. Okay, question number one, sorry, I moved a tiny bit on the side. Question number one is the best book you've read thus far in the year. Now the book I am featuring in this answer it's the only one that really stood up to me. Like it's the only one that when I was thinking about the answer for this question would repeatedly come up. And I was just like, I have to put it here. Now this is also a sequel. Second book tag question is what is the best sequel you've read? So I was debating for a little while if I wanted to put this as the best sequel or if I want to put this as the best book I've read thus far, but this is the best book I've read thus far in 2024. We will see if it's gonna be toppled over by something else in the latter half of a year but as of now I doubt and this is Empire of the Damned by Jay Christoph, the sequel to Empire of the Vampire. I don't know if it's gonna be a trilogy, I suspect it's gonna be a trilogy and this is epic high fantasy, vampire fantasy, a new follow Gabriel De Leon who has been in the first book captured by vampires and he's now agreeing under duress to sit down with a historian, a vampire historian, and recount his history, how he became the very famous Gabriel de Leon, the very famous vampire hunter. And I'm just gonna leave it very vague because there is so much more to this story, but I generally adored the first book. And for how much this is a tiny bit pretension in the writing, and it's not gonna be for everyone. It's a grim dark fantasy as well, so it's full of violence and gore. For me, it just works perfectly. I said this about the first book and I repeat this in the second book. It's just if Mr. Christo had sat down with me and said, Eva, what story do you wanna read about? And I told him and he went home and wrote this duology for now, possibly trilogy soon. I just adore every bit about this. I adore his writing, I adore the characters, the plot, the story. I was jumping on my seat in certain scenes. Uh, the end wasn't the most surprising thing. I saw things coming, but I just adore the story, the setting, and again, how he is, is adding flavor to it with his writing. That I generally don't care, even if you can guess some plot twists. It's as of now, one of the series is where if a new book comes out, I just stop everything else I'm doing, everything else I'm reading, and I, I read that immediately. And so, yeah, it has to be Empire of the Damned because it just, this story sipped under my skin and has been there for months now, and I don't think it's gonna go anywhere for the rest of the year. Will this be my favorite book of the year? I don't know. That's, I'll accept bets down in the comments below. <laughs> uh, best sequel. Then at that point I was like, okay, this is also a sequel, because clearly it's book number two in a trilogy, I believe, uh, but I decided to not repeat answers, so I will go with a very recent read, which is The Last Argument of Kings. This is book number three. three. This is book number three in the first Law trilogy. Now, this is the first trilogy in a bigger saga. I will definitely continue on after reading these and I decided to put these as a best sequel because it was a remarkably good read but also because I was expecting to not like in these at all. I had not loved number one and number two in the saga, in the series. Uh, everybody was raving about these. I do like his writing, how gritty, how grim dark his stories are. But I never felt the same investment in the series before reading these that other people had felt and shared online at least. So I went into these knowing that for many it was the least favorite in the whole saga and I was like oh I'm gonna hate these, what weather and as always reverse logic worked. It's magic and I ended up loving to beats what everybody else disliked overall. I love this. Uh, 
from the beginning to end and um, it's a five stars spoiler for my <laughs> wrap up of the end of the month the character grew on me so much the epic battle that it's like hundreds of pages long kept me glued to the pages i was so invested and i can't wait now to read the other books it made me want to pause everything else go and pick up the um standalone and then the other trilogy that's out that's how much i adore that like when a book can make me feel like i need to read the next one right now that it's a big win for me this is grim dark epic high fantasy and i believe like everybody pretty much knows what the first law trilogy is about so because it's so popular i don't feel like the need of giving you a synopsis but do let me know if you wish that i had because i'll always take feedback and try to improve uh next question is new release you want to read so new release for the first half of a year that you want to read but have not gotten around to do it yet so these are books that are already out and i compiled a list of these i have only one of them in my hands but um i have evocations by st gibson i just heard a lot of buzz around this one with the beautiful edition by fair loot and so yeah i definitely want to read these and i believe it's about this young man who has to go back in touch with his ex-boyfriend to try and break a curse that it's bothering him or his family and i hope it's dark sensual and full of evil magic but that's just my those are just my hopes for now but yeah i wanted to read these because again i heard so many so many people talking about this new release and then i also want to read emily wilde's the second book in this trilogy series, I don't know how many books are gonna be. It's called Emily Wilde and the Maps of the um, Otherlands, and I believe I also ordered these on Fairy Loot, so I'm waiting for Fairy Loot to send me my copy so I can read it. And I do not tend to buy multiple copies. Like I know that I would be have been able to read them as soon as they came out if I had bought them like in normal bookshop, but I don't wanna spend like twice the money on a book because yes i'm looking forward to reading them i'm not obsessed to the point of spending double the money since i've already spent quite a lot for the special editions i can wait also like an, another one i've heard a few people mentioning and i was very intrigued by the synopsis said that i'm gonna be a bit hypocritical because i don't remember exactly the synopsis so i'm just gonna put the cover here but i remember the cover and the synopsis together caught my attention and that's a dark droning I believe that's what it's called and now most anticipated releases for the second half of the year that I want to get around to read and they have not come out yet and with these I wish I had more time to do more research uh, but that came up on top of my head when I was filling in the answers to these questions was the sequel to the, the house on the cerulean sea that's somewhere beyond the sea by tj clone I loved the first book in this, I believe it's gonna be a duology and I can't wait to read the sequel. In the first book you follow this man who is a social worker and is sent to this remote area in this fantasy world where kids they have special powers and because of the powers were rejected by their parents are kept in this um, orphanage. So this social worker has to go investigate what's going on in the orphanage because there is a rumor that a very powerful and potentially deadly child is um, being hosted by the orphanage and he might be the son of a devil or something of a sort so he needs to go and investigate how safe the population is of the orphanage and he goes there and all of his kids are lovely the humor is lovely and there is a particularly um, charming uh, principal of the orphanage that our main protagonist will take an initial dislike to and then you'll see how it goes it's a very cozy fantasy and i adore his writing it made me laugh it gave me all the right you know good feelings it's one of those books that i pick up when i want to just have a very good time a relaxing time and so looking forward to reading that uh but next question oh biggest disappointment Ooh, where to start <laughs> how much time have you got okay so let's start with the one i dnf'd um and that was a fragile enchantment this came through with fairy loot and it was gorgeous such a gorgeous book but i couldn't stand it and i read three quarters of it and then i put it down which i generally never do because i'm like if i invested 
five hours of my time in reading these now I can get to the end and I just I just couldn't it was like a Regency era romance like Bridgerton but with a couple of magic bits thrown in misplaced for the most part useless and I as I DNF'd Bridgerton the TV series because it's just I don't really love reading or watching romantic exclusively romantic stuff for the majority of the time uh, it's not my thing so I should have known better but I was bored out of my mind and also had a couple of grudges around how familiar the um, royals were being called like the king was referred as Jack or something of a sort and I'm just like this is poor writing because you wouldn't call the king hey Jack come here Jack like it, it yeah that's not the kind of kings I'm used to. Maybe I read too much fantasy <laughs> where, you know, the, the royals have all of these kind of fancy names. But I felt like the way she wrote this was um, poorly done. And it was an excuse to be published in the fantasy realm, in the fantasy genre. But really, of fantasy, there was nothing. So um, she, yeah, so I just said they did that she needed to find the market for it. And they'd say, oh, I'm gonna add a couple of shitty power stuff it has nothing to do with the actual plot which is boring to begin with so I can get published in the fantasy um, section but yeah no on that note um, let's move on <laughs> to the next one which is Feybound uh, this is how not to do enemies to lovers and this is how not to do a romance uh, the premise of these, it was very exciting actually because it was these, I don't remember if they were fae against elves or opposite. So basically you have these two sisters, they are part of the elves and they believe the fae have been vanquished, they are no longer in existence and then for a series of reasons they get captured by guess what, the fae. And so they have to live in their world for a while and the two sisters Although I think this story had elements, had potential, it was butchered by the writing and it was butchered by how the plot was developed, the romance, it was like an instant love that made no sense whatsoever. Um, one of the other two sisters, she's got into this like lovers to uh, enemies to lovers and again it was so poorly done. Um, so rushed. The execution was very poor. So I uh, finished that book. I managed to finish because it was a short one, but nope, I'm not gonna continue on. Nope, I'm not gonna do that to myself ever again. Um, so I sold my copy. <laughs> and then I have Lord of Shadows by Cassandra Clare. I decided that I had not read, a, so I read another book by Clare and which I'm going to discuss later on, and it was a success. So I decided to go back to the series, the Shadow Hunter, Shadow Hunter series that I never completed on, and I was up to the Dark Artifices series, and I had to read Lord of Shadows. And oh God, what an awful, slow, painful experience it was. It was a 700 book of nothing. I was there for Julian and Emma, and I got everybody else. I've literally got their neighbor's story apart from them. And when they appeared, I enjoyed it, but it was literally like probably 70 pages out of 700 pages was about them. And I couldn't care less about the others. So I dragged my feet through these and I'm really not looking forward to finishing the third book in that series. But if I don't, I can't move on to the next series. So yeah, I don't know what happened there. I don't know. Last one I'm gonna mention is Kingdom of the Feared. What what kind of hell is that? I listen. I the only book by Manis Kalkov that I liked is the first one in this trilogy, Kingdom of the Wicked. I believe it was called. I enjoyed that one. Uh, the protagonist was sassy. The romantic interest. Uh, inter the romantic interest was interesting. It worked. And then in book number two, they go to hell, and all hell broke loose, pun intended. Um, it's just the, I don't know, there is a side of me that reads green dark fantasy that for whatever reason couldn't justify the fanciful, the fanciful um, lush hell that she depicted. It, it seemed to me like a joke and I was like you could have an done this story with Faze and I would have been okay with that but for me buying the fact that these 
evil, these devils are actually um, living in this fancy place, doing parties and actually being so kind and altruistic. I just couldn't buy it and the main protagonist becomes so fucking boring, like I was bored out of my mind. So I don't think she is for me. I think eventually the characters, even ones who have potential, the more I read about them, the more they lack any nuances or anything that it's like kind of like a visa mirage. It's like I'm in a desert, I read the first book and I see a mirage. Oh, it looks cool. And then I get there and it's not water at all, it's just a rock. That's how I felt about Kingdom of Fear. That's how I feel about her characters. There is that sparkle that dies so quickly that it's, yeah, it probably is never there to begin with. So I am probably giving up on this author as well. Biggest surprise, I will have to put Leviathan Wakes because I am. I've gone around my channel saying, I don't like sci-fi, I don't like sci-fi. Uh, well, turns out I do like sci-fi, <laughs> if it's done in this way. I initially started these and I was like, mm, am I gonna enjoy this, am I not gonna enjoy this? Because it, there are a lot of technical terms that reading sci-fi in my second language, it's quite difficult because I'm not that familiar with the uh, vocabularies that it's used, just because those kind of vocabularies are not like, something I've learned through my studies or just you know living here a few years is not that common so a lot of words I had to look up for um, in the dictionary and so initially it was a bit like an experience where it was very like very much interrupted experience because I would have to look up terms and stuff like that. It took me like 100 pages to understand that G stands, stood for gravity so yeah probably I am also dumb yeah that's that's a possibility in all of these but in general I'm not familiar with sci-fi but I ended up loving this. I ended up loving the, um, being so invested actually in the plot. By the end, I left everything else I was reading at the time because I needed to finish this. I needed to find out how, you know, what would happen and the mystery behind all of it and how it was resolved. I thought it was quite satisfying. It was very satisfying actually, not quite. It was very satisfying and I just immediately went and bought the sequel. Sorry for the background noise, I had to open the window because you see in June in London at 8 a.m. it's 10 degrees, okay? So in the morning it's autumn, fall season. In the afternoon around 6 he decides that maybe it can be spring for an hour or two and so it gets very hot up in the studio and so my camera overheats but now outside of course it's full of cars because people come home from work. Anyway, digression aside, this is a very popular series. You follow two main protagonists. One is a detective and is looking for the rich, the daughter of his rich family that has gone missing. The other one stumbles upon an abandoned spaceship where a lot of weird things have gone down, like the crew is missing and it looks very shady. And in this world, now the um, humans have basically invaded and colonized the solar system so we are not only living on earth but we are living in different planets throughout the solar system and yeah it's just a space opera it's the first one in a big big series i don't know how many books are out but i think a new one a new book is coming out in the series so we are at least at 10 books or something of a sort so i met these two main characters really enjoyed them really enjoyed the characterization and the dynamics between the two and i'm gonna continue on so yeah, big surprise, I love this. Uh, favorite characters, I wanted to mention, because I have to, uh, but I don't want to repeat answers, so it's going to be a quick mention, but can I mention Dogman and Logan, Ninefinger Logan? Is that Logan? How do you pronounce it? I don't know, let me know in the comments something below. Um, I know that everybody loves Glo Glotka, again, I'm butchering names, and I do like him as a character, but toward the end of this, I had a moment where I struggled with him a bit more, but who, the characters that really sticked with me the most are Ninefinger and Dogman. Love them so much. But if I didn't have to, um, if I didn't have an honorable mention, and I would come up with a different answer, that would be Jude Wolf from the Invocations. I received this amazing copy of Invocations in my Lumicrate um, Evernight box. I think in October, September. Don't remember. And this is a standalone fantasy. Uh, it's an urban fantasy where you follow these three women. They are on the lookout for these killer who kills women that are witches. And each one of them have their own reasons to pursue this killer. 
and Jude, my favorite character, Jude Wolf, she made a deal with the devil and because of that her body's rotting from inside out and now she needs to find a bigger demon to make another deal and try to get her body back and she's sassy, she's fearless, she doesn't give a them about a lot of things and I love her so so much. By the way, if you're partial to horror books as I am and you want an actually scary witch book with kick-ass witches that actually practice dark magic and you want to have a bunch of scary as hell, pun intended, demons, this is the book for you. It was such a good horror. The first book with witches and you know in the horror genre that actually worked for me so inv the invocations really recommended that one as well new fictional crush now i've got a couple and i'm gonna start with another book i adored this year this book almost made it into my favorite of the year we together with empire of the vampires which is a bit absurd if you want in a sense because these are ya romans where um the writing is very good but the plot is it's good the plot is good to be fair but i can't compare because clearly they sat in different genera, they have different scopes, but this book was so good for what it was that I almost put this as the best read of the year. And this is The Crimson Moth by Kristen Ciccarelli and this is part of our, the first book in the duology, I believe. It's also known as, um, with another title, um, I'll put it down here if I remember the other title. Look at this first of all, gorgeous. Um, fairy lit copy that came in and it's the story of a witch and a witch hunter who are playing each other to try and find information and by playing each other they end up playing a very dangerous game where their emotions and sentiments are also eventually involved let's say like that I loved this love story it, this, is, this is how you do enemies to lovers if you can say so, sort of. This is how you do it brilliantly, uh, especially for a YA audience. It does have some mature content, but it's, it's still a YA, I would say. And Gideon. Gideon is definitely a crush. He's a very austere, uh, emotionally cold man at the beginning of the story, and I adore him. And the other guy I must mention is Connor. Uh, the Prince in Sword Catcher by Cassandra Clare. So this is the start of a new series by Clare and it's her first adult series. It's a high fantasy and I really, really enjoyed this uh, book. And I adored Connor, who again is this bit of a playboy, not very serious. And the exterior is, you know, someone who doesn't care much about anything. It's very extroverted. It's always like kind of fun to be around, but inside he is full of trauma and inner conflict. And I really liked Connor. The premise of this book is that you have, you follow this world catcher. This world catcher is someone who can pass as the prince. So is used during official ceremonies in order to make sure that no one actually attempts to assassinate the real prince, if that's the case. And then there is a girl. She be belongs to this cast of people that uh, live on the outskirts of the city and they, are, uh, they have different rules because of their religions, they have different costumes, so they don't really mingle with the main population and she's a healer and for a series of events their lives become intertwined when she has to heal one of them and it's yeah it was such a fun entertaining um interesting first read and i adored the relationships inside these so yeah connor and gideon and they are both they're both a lot of work i don't know what that says about me anyway Moving on. Next question is, what books do you need to read by the end of the year? And I always found these kind of questions quite silly in a sense because I'm like, eh, all the books, of course. Uh, but if I have to stop and actually think, and I want you to hold me to these, there are five books that I need to read by the end of the year. Four of them are sequence of series that I need to finish because I am in a million, in the middle of a million of series. And of those ones, I just need one to be done with the series. So I need to get a grip 
and finish for series. But before I get into the series, series that I need to finish, series is nothing, series that I need to finish, I, need, I also need to read Beasts of Prey because I started this book in 2022, read the first chapter and never continued on. And I can't bring myself to unhole it because there is that question mark in my head is, what if you actually like this? Because the premise it sounds cool. You follow this girl who is a zookeeper. If I remember correctly, it's been two years since I've read the synopsis and I didn't think about refreshing my memory uh, before coming here on, on camera. But she's a zookeeper in this zoo that holds magic creatures. And then one of these magic creatures goes missing. So she needs to go in the, in the jungle to find the creature. And if it doesn't sound cool, I don't know why it does. So I've not un unhold it. I need to finish it. I need to read it. Um, hold on, hold you know, hold me to it. And then the other ones I want to finish is the Tower of Babel, the Fall of Babel, book number four. Need to finish this one in this quartet. I need to read and finish the first trilogy of Robin Hobb series. Assassin's Quest is the third in the first trilogy in this huge saga. I need to finish this. I was a bit intimidated, I guess, by the fact that I didn't love the second book and the third one is massive. But you will see. I need to finish Bright We Burn. I need to finish this because I am loved and I darken, loved and I darken. This is historical fiction, it's not fantasy. And you follow basically the son and daughter of Vlad the Pes. It's a kind of reimagined historical fiction. And I loved the first one. The next one, the second one now I rise was a mixed bag. But I love the ending. So I need to finish this trilogy and be done with it. And I need to finish Bloody Hell, The Burning God by R.F. Quang. I need to finish this. I adore, I adore The Poppy War. I liked very much the sequel. Um, didn't love Babel. And I think that put me off reading the, the next, you know, the last one um, in the book, but in, in, in the book the last one in this trilogy, but I want to finish The Poppy War. And I, it's such a story that sticked with me so much that I kind of remember a lot about the first book. Don't remember that much about the second book, but I'm pretty sure I can keep up. I can catch up and then finish The Burning God. So hold me to these that I have to finish by the end of the year, these. And if I don't, you can decide my punishment, okay? So let's see, let's see. But you can write down in the comments down below, if you don't finish these books, you have to, I don't know, read a massive classic or, I don't know, you, you come up with a punishment. Book related, please, of course. And moving on, uh, books have made you cry. So pff, I'm a cold hearted bitch. I don't really, <laughs> no, I'm kidding, I'm not, I'm not that cold, but I, I, am, I don't cry, I don't cry, um, almost never. And so I really, it's, a struggle for me to cry. However, books and movies come closer. So the two books that come closer to make me cry are, first of all, uh, The Ethnic Cleansing of Palestine. This is a non-fiction book. I listened to this on audiobook and it's actually about the ethnic cleansing of Palestine that happened after World War II. Don't quote me on this, but I believe it was in 1947 and then 48. As the title suggests, it's the ethnic cleansing of Palestine. So it's the ethnic cleansing from the Jews, the Jewish people, the Jewish people that came, arrived after World War II and they pushed out the native population. And especially in, you know, the climate we will live now <laughs> with the war and everything that's going on now, I randomly stumbled upon this on audiobook, on script, listened to it and it really broke my heart. And I had no idea about the history, I was very ignorant about all the history of Palestine, what happened, I had no idea about the ethnic cleansing and he says in the book how, you know, this is kind of shoved under the rug, is that how you say in English? And you know, how many people don't know about this. And after reading this book, I had so many conversations with people and people have no idea that this happened. So this really broke my heart, but also it was so um, enlightening. So I learned so much about from this book. And then I would put Glory by Noviolet Bulawayo. This is a book that I picked up with my book club. This is a very clever book. And it's basically, you know, Animal Farm by George Orwell, where you have 
characters, the main characters are animals. So she does the same thing. So she's talking about the history of Zimbabwe, but she's doing it using all characters are animals. And so she used this metaphor of animals to tell us about the history and the, the amount of deaths and persecution and the cruelty of the police and the changing government and how this affected the population using animals and when we have our main protagonist and she's called our main protagonist she is uh what was it called oh my god destiny destiny so this is our main protagonist and i had um, i was emotionally shaken a lot when we are taught about what happens to Destiny and her mother. Um, there is a lot of violence in these, uh, violence against women, violence in general, a lot of rape and uh, torture and death, so that you're aware of. But I found this so clever and again, some moments, her writing and how she was depicting this violence, um, it really got to me. So these are the books that had me, um, they shook me a lot, both of these books I just mentioned. And beautiful books. <laughs> Where to start? Where to start with fairy loot and uh, just yeah. I can show you a million of them, but I will go with fairy loot editions for this time around. I also subscribe actually. Let's start with fairy loot and then I'm gonna tell you probably about the favorite one I've received thus far, which is not a fairy loot. So first of all, I already showed you uh sword catcher, right? Um Sword catcher, like I love this edition. Like Santa Claire. Sorry, not showing you properly, am I? So this is a good one. I really, really loved the. I really loved the cover of what's like. This is my favorite hair color ever. So, yeah, that one. Uh, the evocations. The evocations. Such a good copy such an amazing book i love these inner pages i do unboxings uh, for all of my um, monthly boxes so you can if you want to subscribe and check out my unboxings i also purchased this special edition of tales of a celestial kingdom these, is, these are novellas um, and i just love the pages love the um, sprayed pages they're just gorgeous and the last one by fairy loot i'm currently reading a feather so black and look at this i have a couple of broken binding um, as well that would be worth mentioning but one is still in a box uh, ready to be unboxed so for this time <laughs> Maybe next year, at the end of the year, I'm going to show it to you um, all the special editions. But yeah, I just love the... I also love the cover of this one. But probably my favorite one, which is going to be a random choice, is my Illumi Crate I received two months ago. And that is for Murder Road. This is the box there... Um, Evernight box, so it's a horror subscription, but it's quarterly, and I just fell in love with the cartoonish style because it really reminded me of Scooby Doo. And like, look at these pages that are cartoonized. I'm obsessed with this. I am, ob I actually, I actually screamed a bit, like, oh my god, um, which is not very, like, I mean, I'm too old to squeal like that for a book, but. Look at this book. I'm obsessed. So yeah, this is probably my favorite edition that I received this year. But all of the special boxes, Fair Loot, Illumicrate, uh, The Broken Binding, Stunning. And the last question is my favorite video, a favorite video I've done. And I've done a couple that I would say I'm quite proud of the amount of work that went into them. One is the books revival. I'm gonna link them down below. So I kind of did a revival show for books. So I looked at 
10 books I really loved and probably never mentioned on my channel or I'd not mentioned enough on my channel so I could kind of recommend them to you so I went through the synopsis and why I love them a bit love that video and also I put a lot of effort and I enjoyed so much just the process of researching reading the books and then putting together the video for my first true crime um, episode so basically I read three books about Ted Bundy and I reviewed the books I re viewed uh, the, the books in terms of their quality in my opinion but also then I kind of delved into a bit of Ted Bundy that I learned from the books so I have a big passion for true crime I study forensic psychology at uni and so it's a yeah it's a it's a big sphere of my life if you want true crime and study the criminal mind so yeah I put a lot of effort and love in that video which is weird thing to say about a video about a serial killer but yeah I enjoyed the process of filming that sharing with you my thoughts and yeah I love doing that so guys thank you so much for watching let me know all your answers to all of these questions or if you do it if you you know have a channel on YouTube and you do this tag please let me know I'm gonna go and check it out if you're new I would love for you to subscribe join the small community I'll see you next time take care of yourself ciao